Welcome to the Inside Silverstone podcast, a business-focused podcast covering all things tech, engineering and innovation. Hosted by me, Chris Broom, a huge tech, motorsport and gaming fan, and also the owner of Longhurst, a firm of lifestyle financial planners and independent financial advisors located in Silverstone, Northamptonshire. This is a series of unscripted and unpolished conversations with leading business owners, thought leaders and high-tech talent where we discuss their experiences within the Silverstone business and motorsport region. We will also be asking them to share their knowledge, insight and their thoughts on the future just for you. If you're looking to learn more about the Silverstone high growth region and commercially connect with like-minded peers, you've definitely come to the right place. Welcome to Inside Silverstone. Welcome to the next edition of Inside Silverstone. My name is Chris Broom and I'm your host today. I'm delighted to finally get on the show for episode 99 out of 100, the one and only Henry Oxley, a.k.a. K-Doz. Henry, K-Doz, welcome to the show, my friend. Yes, Chris. Thank you for inviting me. I am, loving, I am loving, for those with YouTube watching some video, I'm loving the neon lights behind your head. You got that as a birthday present. Loving it. Looks very, hey. very good. Let's on, go. On point. Now, right, Henry. K-Doz. Whatever mm-hmm. I'm gonna call, what do you want me to call you today? You can call me Henry. It's fine. I'm going to call you Henry. Okay. So, there's going to be a lot of people watching this and listening to this, certainly in my community, yeah. who might not be into their gaming. Mm-hmm. How dare I say that? How are you not into your gaming? Right. <laughs> but you're, you are... For those that are listening and watching this, a massive, I would say, a massive YouTube star and a massive Fortnite player. You have a YouTube channel that has over 2 million subscribers. Yeah. 100 videos so far, which you started in March 2017-ish. Yeah, yeah. With 300 million views. Drop the mic. Yeah, 3 million views a a video on average. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at... Uh, YouTube now because I follow you clearly. Your biggest ever download video, viewed video, 22 million views. <laughs> I created popular songs using music blocks in Fortnite. 22 million views. And then I'm looking at others 13 million, 12 million, 9 million, 8 million, 8 million. You started this in 2017 when Fortnite came out. So you obviously became addicted to it like a lot of us. Yeah, and, and, but but instead of just being a geek like me and just playing it with my brother and my nephew, as it mm-hmm. were, you literally have turned it into a business, into yeah. a big YouTube channel, where you have literally just celebrated your twentieth birthday. So you're a young entrepreneur, and I thought I need to get you on the podcast <laughs> because you know we're recording a lot of, uh, of interviews for folk involved in Silverstone technology, motorsport, artificial intelligence, you know everything, lots of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. But I haven't had on someone that is prolific as you are on YouTube. So, Henry. Yes, Chris. So talk to me. So talk to me. How do you transition from being a a kid? Like I remember being a kid and I'm gaming. How Mm -hmm. do you transition from that to I'm going to start recording videos? Yeah. And then I'm going to start monetizing this and I'm going to just become boom. I'm going to be become bigger, bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger. How does that happen? Talk to me about that journey. All right. So I first started watching youtube as a kid i was like 12 maybe 13 and at the time it was the the, the sort of biggest gaming creator at least that, that i can remember is ali yeah you've probably heard of him still around now um so yeah i'd watch a lot of his videos there was there's other creators like the sidemen uh pewdiepie obviously people like that um and obviously i'd just sit there every day in the morning before school watching their videos uh and i remember Originally, what sort of got me into making videos was obviously they influenced me a bit. But uh, <laughs> when you hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, there's like they send out like a, a play button. It's like a silver like reward you get. They send it out. And I remember seeing it, it, it for the first time. I was like, I, I really want to get one of these. Nice. Um, so I started recording, you know, Minecraft videos at the time is what I played. Uh, <laughs> recorded it on my iPad like recording the TV, because obviously I didn't have like screen recorders and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I, I originally before the channel I have have now, I would, you know, upload Minecraft videos over, I think I started when I was like 14 or something. Uh, and then it got to, I think maybe 
15, 16, that channel hit like a hundred thousand subscribers. Wow. Uh, but that's, that's like a, a channel I don't have anymore. Um, and then obviously Fortnite comes around uh, and I just saw, you know, how big and popular this game was just all of a sudden just taking over the gaming space. And I just thought, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity to, to jump on it. So um, I, I can't remember what year I was in at school. Uh, if I was set 2017, I must've been like year 10, year 10 at school, I think maybe when I started. Yeah. So yeah. And then now, you know, it's my job or whatever. So well, it is your job, it's your business. It is, it is. An entrepreneur absolutely <laughs> nail it in my mind. And so <laughs> so you've gone from Minecraft, yeah. filming it on your, your iPad on your TV, yeah, presumably doing commentary, to mm -hmm. then Fortnite comes out and, and it blows up massively because it's a free game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bar obviously the, the, the in-game purchases, but it's ultimately a free game, which everyone, all, all kids and, and, and indeed adults can download and start playing. Yeah. And, and so you start recording... And presumably you then start buying or investing in better equipment. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when I first started the videos on the channel, I have it was all I was all on my PS4, and it used to have like a built-in recorder. You could yeah. live stream off it. Um, and I had like a my mic was literally like a headset mic, like this. So yeah. I was recording off that. I didn't have any cameras or anything. It's just like literally my voice and and then gameplay. Um, and then obviously as I grew bigger, I invested in equipment. I'm now on a PC. We've got the camera, we've got some lights, uh, two monitors, and, and obviously a microphone and stuff. So Yeah, yeah. And now neon lights behind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so, so, like, I've never, I don't think I've ever actually I've ever asked you this question. So, like, your, your friends, your mates, your circle, right, your boys and girls, you know, presumably yeah. they, they obviously went to, uh, obviously, uh, A-levels perhaps, college, some have gone off to university. Yeah. And you've literally launched this, what is already within a couple of years, phenomenal business. Yeah. How, how are those conversations? Like, so like, yeah, they're, they're just normal, I guess. I, I, I don't really think or I, I'm just, they, they support what I do. I'm good mates with them and stuff. I'm not really, I try not to honestly like speak about when I'm playing with them. I don't really mention too much about what I'm doing and, and stuff. Cause sometimes I, it would get a bit repetitive if I kept going on about it, but um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just, yes, yeah, just normal conversations. Staying, staying humble which is good so so yeah coming to that, so you obviously game with you with your mates yeah so, so question who wins all right yeah so on Fortnite, you know i spend a lot of time playing it so <laughs> I, i'm I, I like to take the crown on the Fortnite, but um it's not only just like my actual in real life mates i've met quite a few other creators who are sure. who are like friends and stuff so um yeah yeah i just just play with my mates i guess that's good the boys that's good. What, what other games do you play bar Fortnite? We'll obviously talk about Fortnite more in a second, but what other, yeah. presumably you play other games or, or, yeah. or previously love, love other games bar Minecraft? Yeah, so uh, I used to play Call of Duty. I yeah. still play Call of Duty now in my, yep. in my uh, free time. GTA, uh, what's it, Rocket League, like Minecraft, obviously, and then Fortnite. And honestly, Among Us has just come out. You've probably heard of it. It's like a, it's a new game that's sort of taken the world over kind of um so yeah just whatever i feel like playing i guess and so and so for fortnite fortnite's obviously been around for three years i think yeah. three years sort of three yeah. years um and it just keeps like just going and going people are like oh this is going to be like a one-year wonder and it's you know it's going to sort of fall away but it just keeps it just seems to be growing and growing they keep releasing new seasons yeah they like, take forever to bloody download on my playstation <laughs> and then, but then the graphics are improving the functionality of the gameplay is better interaction yeah. they're doing they're doing music concerts yeah i mean so like it talks to us about that so so how are they running yeah. music concerts how does that work in reality i haven't actually seen that i think what's happening at, at this point is like the game's so big that these musicians are paying Fortnite to have themselves in the game like they just had a travis scott the rapper like his own event in game like virtual event like concert and what's like obviously it's a massive audience so if you can get your a, a, an in-game concert for travis scott like it's just free promote. Well, not free promotion, but it's just a massive market that you How hit. did that work? So I, if I if I was there at that time, I'd be jumping. I'd be jumping off the bus. I'd yeah. be landing on the island, and I would find where his where where his stage was, and he'd be performing. Yeah, yeah. So they like normally set a dedicated time, 
uh, they make like a special playlist in game that you load into. And then the crazy thing is like, it's happening all at once. So it like, they set this time and if you don't make it like it's over, so you miss the concert. So um, I think that adds a, a lot to the success of the game. The events they do like are in insane. Um, I think Epic Games, the developers are, are definitely, they, they know what they're doing. Yeah. But, yeah. What what was the I, I saw on Twitter? I think it was a month, two months ago. The sort of debacle with Apple. So what was all that right. about? Yeah. So I um, think Epic Games got a little bit greedy, at least from what I've heard. Um, apparently, to have your app on on the App Store, like obviously Apple take a percentage or whatever. I think oh. it's like twenty percent maybe of earnings. Uh, so Epic Games weren't happy of that, uh, and then they tried basically switching the way that you could purchase in-game currency so that it, it wouldn't go through like the Apple portal or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you bypass their like percentage that they take. And then obviously Apple weren't happy with that. So they sued Epic Games. And now now you can't even play Fortnite on your mobile on, on like an iOS device. So that, like, that still hasn't been resolved. No, nah, it's, it's meant to be go, going on for like a year or something. Or, or something crazy but this was the hashtag free Fortnite thing yeah they, 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 to be fair they did release that really good video they, that, the that. the yeah i know yeah the recreation of one of their old trailers is that what is yeah, that the yeah, one you're yeah, talking where they're about stamping yeah yeah where they're marching so yeah yeah really yeah good. that was a, a right like, more questions henry right i've ri literally written a long list of questions i thought i really really want to ask you so <laughs> and i think people listening to this whether it be your followers or indeed those that are, that are following our podcast so how long does it take you to genuinely think up an idea and plan a video? You've done a hundred so far, ranging yeah. from, I mean, literally, I'm going to read some of these out. So, okay, so you've literally created a, a popular song using music blocks, which is 22 million views. <laughs> Phenomenal. Asking celebrities to play Fortnite with me until one of them does it. Um, uh, I play Fortnite on the worst graphics possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you end up stream sniping a lot of people. So for these watching this and listening to this, what's stream sniping? Uh, so if you don't know what stream sniping is, you essentially like people who live stream the game, you can, the idea of stream sniping is you try and queue up at the same time that they do. And then basically the Fortnite matchmaking will put you in the same lobby as them. So I normally get in, in like massive streamers games like Ninja, you know, all the big Fortnite guys get in their games and <laughs> just do like a load of cool funny stuff in the in their lobbies i saw you you, you literally built a sign for somebody right yeah um, yeah with their name on it or something and, and then and then they're recording and then and then they see it and they talk about yeah. it and they come over to you and then you drop all your weapons and you give them all your stuff yeah and, and then and then they kill you yeah yeah so i try and get really creative what with what goes down uh normally like building a sign for a, a streamer they're not going to see that every day when they're playing so sure. uh it's, it just makes good content really yeah so. yeah, yeah. You, you, you fortnite vr so you wore a vr headset for 24 hours straight gaming. yeah yeah that one uh that was uh i actually enjoyed recording that video um i hadn't you know seen anything done like that before so i thought it'd be a really like viral video and I, yeah, I think it, it, it was it was insane i've watched that yeah. I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of your videos well, talk to us about the one that had something to do with space ah so we ended up sending uh this is before all of that apple stuff went down because if we did it any later it actually turned out the day that Fortnite was banned on mobile devices was like a, a, a day or two later after we recorded the video um so essentially we sent my mobile phone which had Fortnite hooked up to it on like a I don't know, like a, what weather would you call balloon. it? Yeah, like a weather balloon. Uh, and then on the, like the, the balloon was attached like a box and then it had a camera with my phone here filming the, the phone. And then we sent it up all the way to the edge of space, like a hundred thousand feet or whatever. Um, and then what was happening that the, the, the view from the camera that was recording the phone was being live streamed down to my laptop. And I, I was controlling the game from earth as it was all the way up there trying to get a win uh so i got the win um and yeah it's just that our video took like a, a year's worth of planning obviously i wasn't the brains behind the science stuff uh we actually got a company to help out with that so 
Yeah, that was uh, insane. It's phenomenal. For those listening and watching this, you need to go and check it out. So go, as you will do anyway, go on to, to, to Kado's YouTube channel. And it's it's insane. And and then and then it all falls to the falls back to yeah. earth, doesn't it? And yeah. you're literally you are filming yourself running through uh, a farmer's field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clearly with their permission, Henry. Um to, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to pick up your, your equipment. Yeah, that was uh there was always a risk it could like land in the ocean or like on a in the middle of a motorway, whatever. Um, so yeah, we were literally tracking the balloon as it came down in the car and stuff. And then we managed to obviously find it in the farmer's field. Honestly, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, so, but yeah, so come back to my question actually. So uh, I sort of went off on a tangent. Like how long does it take you to come up with an idea and re really sort of strategize? Because presumably you have to put some proper thought into it and, and yeah. actually construct uh, like a storyboard or something to, to, to provide it with some structure. Yeah, so... When, when I'm thinking of an idea, like I, I get loads of ideas, but it's, I'm really like picky with what I go with. Um, so normally sometimes it can take me like two, three days of just straight brainstorming for ideas. Anyway, once I've found, you know, like an idea that I think is going to suit my audience and my channel and whatever, I first off uh, start, you know, drafting out titles. So how I'm going to like word or like, do all the title stuff because uh, uh, basically the way I the way YouTube d displays videos when they suggest it it has to be like fifty characters or less to get the keywords in front of the cutoff. Yeah. So I sort of you know make a ton of variations of a title. Once I've decided that the title I'm going with, I then start making the thumbnail before I've even recorded anything. Like that's the most important thing because uh, if viewers aren't clicking on a video, YouTube aren't going to promote it. Um, so I, I, I get the title thumbnail, then I go to structure, like how I'm, I'm going to structure the video. Uh, I normally make 10 minute videos, sometimes like 12 or 13. Uh, and then in that, I'm, you know, I, I sort of plan how the whole thing is going to go out, how I'm going to record it, how, you know, how long the intro is going to be and stuff like that. And then I get to record in it. Uh, that can sometimes take, like, depending on what I'm doing, three, four days. And then the editing can sometimes take up to a week. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in, in, you know, I try to aim for quality over quantity videos. Um, yeah, man. I mean, that's yeah. like, that's like a two week process to, to come up with an idea, create, mm. as you said, storyboard, yeah. thumbnail. So I'd never realized that. So thumbnail is that important that you do that first? Yeah. So YouTube look at like two things when, you know, data points, when they're trying to promote a video. Uh, one is the click through rate, which is like how many people per impression are clicking on a video yeah. and the higher, obviously the more they're going to push it. But then the next thing is like, uh, audience retention, like how long a viewer is watching through a video without clicking off, uh, satisfaction signals and everything like that. So, um, yeah, as long as you can nail those, like they'll just keep pushing your video. And, and, and 10 minutes is the optimal time, is it? Uh, it is for me. I, I like to keep it there because any longer, sometimes they can drag on any shorter. It feels like you just sort of cut the video short. So 10 minutes always has, you know, been like how I aim for my videos. And there's also like, uh, they've just recently changed it, but uh, obviously for mon monetization purposes, the longer a video is, or a, as, as long as the video is over eight minutes now, it used to be 10 minutes, you could put mid rolls on your video, which is like more ads, um, so there's more, you know, purpose to, to make a longer video. Sure. Get it. Yeah. Or and, and is it just you producing this and doing it all? Or do you have other people supporting you? At the minute, it's all, it's all me. Um, it can get quite stressful at times. Sure. Uh, like a lot of work and, and stuff goes into it. A lot of people don't realize, I think. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm eventually hoping to, you know, lock in an editor that can sort of edit to my style um uh but yeah yeah at the minute everything everything's me so well fine you know leading by example though right and eventually you'll start building the team up which is very normal when you're running a you know young business which is ultimately what you're doing and, yeah uh, and then you'll be able to lead by example and show them what you're doing um yep. so the best video for downloads is the one i've said so that was the, as i said that was one where you're literally playing music with 22 million views which is just bananas <laughs> what what's been your the, your sort of most favorite video to have produced yeah so I'm, I'm just gonna pull my channel up now let's have a look 
Uh, I think I've got a rough idea here. Um, so, there's, I mean, I normally look like, obviously the more views is, is the better, but like when it, when it comes to my personal favorites uh, from what I've uploaded, the, the VR Fortnite one I, I enjoyed. Um, the, also the asking celebrities to play Fortnite with me. That was a, I remember that video went crazy when I released it. Yeah. Um, did any of them, I haven't watched that one. Did any of them play? Uh, yeah, well, I actually got a response from a rapper uh, called Ian Dior, uh, who, to be fair, I've been following him for a while now. So he follows me on Twitter. So, nice. but, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fun video. It was fun to record. So, yeah, yeah. Good. I'd say those two. New ideas. Can you share new ideas? You got anything in the pipeline that uh, we can be looking forward to seeing? Um, I've got a couple of ideas. I'm not going to say, though. I'm okay. not going to say. I'll have to keep you guys waiting. Okay. I um, like that. Talk yeah. to us about, so clear, I, I don't, I'm not going to sort of touch really on the sort of commerciality of it, i.e., you know, how, how does a YouTuber sort of um, uh, uh, monetize it? Because it's pretty obvious through sort of advertising and otherwise. But but talk to us about, so you're two, two to three years into this and you're, yeah. getting, you're clearly getting noticed. Talk mm -hmm. to us about sort of strategic partnerships and, and things that certainly have come to, to the table for you in the last, or certainly in the last sort of six plus months. Well, right. What sort of partnerships have you, have you sort of discussed or and agreed to? Because I, I, I know that there's one at least. Okay. Yeah. So, so other than like the actual YouTube ad revenue, is this what you mean? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, sort so of stuff isn't, like this. Isn't there like another group that you got, that you've joined? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so recently I got contacted by an organization called Luminosity Gaming. Uh, they're like an esports organization. Uh, and I'm like, I'm signed to them for content purposes. Uh, so basically I'm involved with them. I make one video a month for their channel, but it's obviously a, a good opportunity um, to be involved with them because they've got some, you know, really good creators in there and stuff like that. So um yeah there's that uh and then other, other than that like there's um like other, other than the the youtube ad revenue there's brand deals that you know brands reaching out to you um so you can monetize through that uh what about merchandise much when, when, when am i yeah. when am i getting my kdos t-shirt henry i'm sitting yeah. here doing all these podcasts so i could have been showing your brand off <laughs> yeah i i should have my own on but uh Let me yeah down. yeah um I've got merch now, uh, but I'm thinking about rescheduling and like, you know, redoing everything with that, reworking it all. Um, yeah, there's definitely money to be, to be made in merch. Uh, as long as I'm trying to make some good designs at the minute. Sure. Um, Cause it, what I've got now is good, but it's quite basic. So I'm trying to up the quality and stuff. So fine, which makes sense. And that's all just part of the journey, right? You said you're two or three years into this. And so, yeah. you know, you've got, You've got the world is your oyster, as it were. I, yep. I also see, obviously, on your channel, there's a couple of other channels that people subscribe to. So, so what's the thinking there? I mean, presumably, you're thinking about the future of of KDOS and and yeah. maybe making sort of more channels and, and sort of growing, growing and diversifying, not just not just in Fortnite, but potentially across other games and and, and other areas. Yeah. So I've got my main channel at the minute, uh, and then alongside that, I'm planning on you know growing out my other channels so i've got more kdos which is another channel that i'm going to eventually have content going up there with an editor who's going to help out with that nice. and then i've got another channel called kdos plays that's going to be like variety content like gaming stuff so different games other than fortnite um so the plan is to sort of build like a network of channels so if you know fortnite does happen to go down in popularity it starts fading out uh, i've got backup through those and stuff. What, what do you think is going to happen for, for Fortnite? Because I, you know, because I said it's three years in. There was lots of talk when it first came out that it's just a fad, and you know, it's because yeah. it's a free game, and, and there'll be something else that comes out because stuff like FIFA and Call of Duty is always going to sort of win the race. But <laughs> for me, I just see it growing and, and looking at yeah. your, your download numbers: three hundred million. Yeah. yeah. Like, do do you see Fortnite winding down? Not anytime soon. I, I can, I, I definitely think it'll be around for the next two years, maybe even more, honestly. It all depends at like what the Epic Games do because they're, they're normally pretty good at listening. I say 
listening to the community. I know a lot of the pro players wouldn't agree with me there, but um, yeah, I think I think Fortnite they've got Epic Games have got like a good plan of what's going on. I think they know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, I, I just see it being around for another two years, honestly. Good. Right, Henry, a couple more questions and I'm going to let you get back to what you do best. I'm not going to take okay. up too much more of your time. So just okay. one that's popped into my head. So, actually, the, our podcast is now 99 episodes in by the time people are listening to this uh, and we'll be 100 uh, right. imminently. But when I first launched the podcast, one of the questions I asked, and I've actually stopped recently, but I'm going to ask you, we have other students, we have other folk watching this who are, you know, either transitioning from, from studying into full-time work or even actually in full-time work, but maybe pivoting and thinking about changing what they're doing because they're not happy. Yeah. You've gone from student, gamer, to streaming, to running a business, to having 300 million downloads on YouTube. What, what one bit of advice would you give a younger version of you to, 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 to give them encouragement to perhaps get into something like YouTubing, gaming, yeah, production, et cetera? Um, I would say the number one thing is don't be... A lot of people, when they start out, like copy, you know, copy what's working. So what other creators are doing. I would say just experiment with stuff and like through trial and error, you'll eventually, you know, learn what content you like doing, what works, what doesn't. Um, and another thing is just like actually have it, it just enjoy it. Cause I know if you don't enjoy it at the end of the day, you're not going to, um, you know, like doing it. And it, it, if a video does bad, I mean, I, even me, I have videos that don't perform as well as others, but if you enjoy what you do, you just, you know, get to the next one. Um, and yeah, that, that would be, that would be my advice. And I, yeah, just, I love it. Experiment find your groove and make yeah. sure you enjoy it especially, yeah yeah especially if you're sinking two weeks into producing something right you, you've got to be enjoying it yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i nice would say one. that i would say that yeah second from last question henry mm -hmm. covid related so we're obviously where are we now we're december 2020 yeah hopefully within the next x number of months we're going to get vaccinated over the next year probably six to twelve months what, what are you personally looking forward to doing the most that perhaps you haven't been able to do over the last nine, 10 months? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I don't actually, like obviously when the, the lockdown stuff came in, it didn't really affect me too much because I'm, I'm, I'm normally at the house all the time, whatever. Working. Um, but I would say just being able to go go to a restaurant without you know worrying about the person next to you breathing over you or whatever yeah. um just just like basic stuff like that really yeah. um normal stuff yeah. right just day to day yeah. today where you're not having to wear a mask and uh, yeah yeah <laughs> as you said ch check your shoulder yeah yeah exactly that would be what i'd say last question henry okay this is a serious question this is going to be probably the most serious question that everyone's anyone's ever going to ask you throughout your career right and you know okay. when, when you are your name's up in lights as it is behind you. You will remember this question, this very moment, Henry. Okay. I'm building it up. I'm giving it a drum roll. All right. What is the king of crisps? Ooh, oh, that's easy for me. I don't know. It depends if you count Pringles as crisps. Of course you do. What flavor? I'm, I'm, say, I'm saying Pringles, hands down. What flavor? Hands uh I, i'm a big fan of the the barbecue whatever texas barbecue or whatever man after my own heart man they are so addictive they they, they are you pop you don't stop i mean they i know are real, aren't they? yeah they are they are insane um i'm not a fan of like walkers and stuff really because i don't know I, I normally just eat them and then you know there's not much in the in the bag so man honestly yeah. I, I, what, what i'll say henry as you get older i mean i'm double your age right as you get older i tell you the bags get smaller the <laughs> yeah. quantity get less they just but, fill it with air but but pringles are on point right like these, oh yeah these, these tubs are plentiful and and the flavors are flavorsome so yeah that that's a, that's 100%. a good shot as i said that's probably the most challenging question anyone's ever going to ask you henry so, so yeah so well done for being brave and answering it all good um, all good right what i'm going to do henry i'm going to make sure in our show notes that we've got web links to your youtube channel to everything that's sort of connected with you um yeah. so that our, our wonderful listeners and, and watchers can uh, can find you and, and as i said watch some of these videos including the one where it went up into space which for me is my personal favorite i thought that was genius 
Yeah. Absolutely genius. Mm -hmm. I've already privately messaged you because I told you I think there's an idea that has, you know, that we could do something with Silverstone and cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that I'm going to put some more thought into that. But Henry, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You're episode 99. I'm so pleased that you've come on. Um, you know, I've known you for a short while. I, you know, I'm very proud of what you're doing. I watch what you're doing and the videos that you're pushing out every two to three weeks. It's in an immense amount of work uh, i know how much time goes into it and the hours that you do because we speak about it yeah uh, so you just just keep it up what you know 300 million views <laughs> yeah, yeah within the first two and a half years is just phenomenal um so thank you said, thanks for coming on the podcast buddy um and i will no doubt speak to you again very very soon sir thank you chris i appreciate you having me good man The Inside Silverstone podcast is produced by the team at Longhurst for the benefit of those with a passion for all things tech, engineering and innovation. For more information, please visit longhurst.co.uk forward slash Inside Silverstone, whilst also remembering to give us a 5 out of 5 star rating on iTunes. Please note that neither Chris Broom or Longhurst work for Silverstone Park, Silverstone Circuit or Silverstone Technology Cluster.